Hi, and welcome to my channel, Laura's Library Card. So I finished The Book of Essie by Megan McLean Weir. Um, I listened to the audiobook. I enjoyed listening to the book, but now that I'm finished, I'm kind of struggling to come up with a rating slash review. Um, I did a vlog sort of halfway, a little less than halfway. I think it was up close to 40%. So what I've decided to do is play the vlog portion of the like 40% stuff that I recorded a couple days ago and then afterwards I'm going to kind of give my final thoughts and ratings and I'm going to try to use the caw pile method um, which I've seen a little bit on booktube and I think was originally created by book roast so I will uh, put book roasts uh, original thing where she describes what the caw pile system is down in the description and I will go through it more after my so, vlog. Okay, so here comes the vlog part and then afterwards I'll do the caw pile part for the book of Essie. So I have been listening to the audiobook of the book of Essie by Megan McLean Weir. Um, I'm about 40% of the way through the book and I was having some feelings and so I decided to tell them to you. So like I said, I'm at about 40% of this audiobook. Um, I think the three narrators are doing a really great job. Uh, we have three perspectives. We have Essie, short for Esther. We have Rourke, and we have Liberty. <laughs> Liberty Bell, um, which I just keep thinking of. Liberty Bell from Glow. Anywho, the point is, Essie, we find out at the very start of the book, is pregnant, and she seems to have a plan. She has this plot, she has this plan to sort of defeat her mother, who is the, like, um, person who controls her life and who helps control this like TV show of their family that she's been on that Essie has been on for like her whole life um, and so she's working Essie is kind of like eavesdropping and like pulling strings where she can to kind of like put this mysterious plan in place and Rourke and Liberty are both part of that plan Liberty is this journalist who um, will be able to help control like who has access to the outside world and who will be able to help control media stuff uh if se wants that and also rourke is part of this plan because her you know super conser conservative family can't let her uh can't risk her going and getting an abortion so they plan to marry Essie off and Essie kind of arranges for Rourke to be her husband um, because his family needs the money and, um, you know, Rourke has a secret and she knows the secret, blah, blah, blah. So I'm at 40% and ish and I'm really kind of frustrated because like the book is sort of set up. Essie's mother is like this like really strong figure that was like had all the cards that was orchestrating the whole thing and yet Essie seems to be have been able to easily manipulate her this whole time and also like there are certain things that I assumed that like Essie's mother would be in charge of that like apparently Essie can call the shots on some things because she made sure that Liberty was the one who was going to be able to get all the exclusive interviews and like I don't know. It felt like they set up the like Essie's mom as like the super important, very powerful figure, and then it just doesn't feel like that has been followed through thus far. Maybe I'm like misreading that, but like I don't know. I felt like that like power play was not is not being carried throughout. And then also like Liberty is Essie's choice because Liberty comes from this background where she was basically raised in this very conservative. Uh, like sort of culty setting and had been like a blogger and a, had a podcast and wrote a book about the good that that cult was kind of doing. Um, but like Liberty has a super mysterious past. She like has, I, we know at this point that she had a sister and something mysterious and probably really dramatic happened with said sister. Um, we have gotten a little glimpse as to like how Liberty had left that family and those ideals and those beliefs. But like, I just am not following why Liberty is like really wanting to help Essie other than I think Liberty's like just generally like kind of a good person and feels um, like a connection to Essie in parallel to her own life. Um, honestly, it really feels like Rourke has had the most manipulated uh, perspective so far. He was basically like 
presented with this option to marry Essie and like save his parents and also like he would get his dreams of going to Columbia and being sort of essentially set up for life but like he is sort of manipulated into this position and I don't know my biggest frustration so far at this point which is like almost the halfway point in the book is that like I still don't know what Essie's plan is. I like we've heard almost nothing about her pregnancy. Is she doing her plan to like save her baby? Who is the baby's father? I sort of have like this suspicion that like the baby's father is like an I don't know. I actually have like incestuous like suspicions, but I really hope that that's not true. Um but like, is she doing this? Is Essie's plan to like do this to save her pregnancy? Is Essie's plan to do this to just like get out of town and get out from under her parents' like thumb? Is the pregnancy part of her plan to to like leave and escape and do this thing? Like, why did she pick Rourke as her mark? Like, there she's made one or two comments that sort of like didn't say that she loved Rourke, but Rourke, but sort of like implied that she had been watching him for a really long time and knew that he would be a good choice. For more than just like she has she knows his secret that was not really a secret I saw it immediately um and can like save his family and I just I don't really fully understand like I really want Liberty's background so I've just so far been kind of frustrated with how things are playing out and I really want to like know a lot more information it almost feels a tiny bit like like this is almost like a book two right now that like book one was maybe like Liberty's story and now book two is like Essie's story. Um, I don't know. I'm interested in continuing this book. I'm definitely going to keep on reading because I'm like, what's happening? But I'm also like feel like I'm very frustrated at this moment because I have so many questions and I do plan to keep reading, but I'm normally... I, I, I like when they're, I like it better when books are like, I have questions and frustrations. Okay, some of them have been answered. Okay, I have questions and frustrations. Some of them have been answered. And I just feel like at this point, we're just like building and building. And I'm like, okay, where is this going? Like what? I wish that we had, a, even though it's from Essie's perspective, we have not seen, we the readers have not really been clued in on what her plans are or even what her like motivations are or her... Um, like, how does she feel about this, like, pregnancy, like, and maybe there's more going on because, like, she's not only trying to, like, leave town, but, like, she's also trying to, like, get a hold of her sister. I don't know. So there's a lot going on and I'm just, like, kind of frustrated, but I am enjoying it. So I'm got to keep reading and I'll tune in later with more thoughts. Thanks. Bye. So those were all my thoughts about halfway through. Um... And so after I finished it, I kind of, there were certain things that I was like, well, this was really strong. So it's like a, a solid, like four, almost five star book. And then I was like, but then there was this and this too. So like, it should be less than that. And I just felt like I was kind of jumping all over the place with my thoughts and review and rating for the book of Essie. So I decided to try for the first time ever live on camera, <laughs> uh, try this cop pile method and see if this like systematic way of doing things is a little bit better. So first section, so the way this works is you rate every section one through 10 and then you average all of them and then that should equal out what your star rating is. So the first category is characters. Um, I would say characters are sort of the biggest part of this book. Um, we have three main characters um, that the perspectives keep jumping between and that's Essie and Rourke and Libby um, or Liberty Bell. And I felt like Essie was definitely the strongest um, of those of those perspectives. And honestly, I felt like Liberty Bell's character was sort of the weakest. Like she functioned to do a lot of the like work that Essie couldn't manage to get done um, because she was like being monitored and stuff. And like we do get Liberty's backstory. So like we're supposed to understand why Liberty is like receptive to Essie and why Essie might have reached out to Liberty. Um, but I just felt like Liberty's perspective was just like a little bit, I wanted a little bit more from her. Um, I liked the other two. I liked Rourke. I liked Essie. Um, I definitely guessed Essie's like secret. I saw it pretty far like coming. Um, so I felt like our main three characters were pretty good and were in like 
kept me interested in them. Um, I felt like the side characters, I wanted a little bit more actually like evilness out of our like bad guy characters. I just felt like they could have been a little bit more strongly on page presented as evil. Um, we just kind of had to take like Essie's word for it that they were. Um, and also like her, to me, one of the biggest disappointments was Lissa or Elizabeth. Um, Essie starts off trying to find her sister and trying to figure out if, if the same thing has happened to her sister that has happened to her. Why is her sister left? Why is her sister not stayed in contact with her? Um, and then so she does, that was one of the things that Liberty did for her is find Lissa. But then like Lissa is like not really very much in the rest of the book. And so I just felt like I almost I don't say I don't think I would have wanted Lissa's perspective over over Liberty's perspective, but like I just felt like we like Essie was so focused on finding Lissa, and then Lissa was like she like finds her, and they like have a conversation, and then Lissa is like only sort of kind of in the background for the rest of the book. So it was like what was functioning here. So for me, the characters were pretty strong, um, but uh, a lot of the secondary characters like didn't like pull through for me. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and rate characters like a solid 7.5. I can't, this is really, this is actually really hard. Like, like yay teachers. So the next category is atmosphere, um, which I guess is sort of like world building. This book was set in a contemporary modern United States. So that was, there wasn't really any world building that really needed to happen. Um, regarding tone for the setting, um, I definitely felt like the first couple chapters really set Essie up to be like, I'm being watched all the time. I'm being supervised every single moment that I am awake and alive. My entire life is being scripted. Um, I have this like her mother was functioning as like this like person who made every single one of her decisions and like was a tyrant slash overlord slash like dominator bad guy person. Um, and for me that just didn't really follow through with the rest of the book. Um, there were certain other little chapters where people's I felt like people's flashbacks were written really in an evocative way, but like the atmosphere to me was just sort of like, yeah, it was there, but like this wasn't exactly like a world building kind of book that a fantasy would be. Um, so I'm just gonna give it like a solid eight. <laughs> um, okay, writing style. This is sort of the section that I feel that I'm least able to comment about. I was not an English major, I never really, felt like I, I felt like a lot of my lessons in high school and stuff were about uh, using grammar correctly and how to conjugate verbs, etc. But uh, how to diagram a sentence, but we never actually talked a ton about writing style and like how an author's voice really affects a work. Um, I felt like I did just say during atmosphere that some of the scenes were written in a very evocative style. Um, but it wasn't like I don't feel like the uh, text was like overly flowery nor too blunt. Um, so I feel like this is an area that I don't know how to evaluate very well, but I enjoyed the writing style and I was like kind of pulled along. So I felt like she, the author did a good job like painting a good picture for the most part. So I'm going to go ahead and rate that highly with an eight. Um, plot. Uh, the, there wasn't a ton of plot here. One of my frustrations was that this whole book sort of took place over like a month maybe of time. Um, I felt like, you know, right up front that Essie is pregnant. That's like the very first line of the book. Um, I sort of felt like we knew, um, and within the first like two or three chapters, we know that there's going to be like this wedding. And so she really just is spending the book trying to like get Rourke on board and try to communicate with Liberty Bell about like these interviews and stuff. So there really wasn't a ton of plot. A lot of it was filled in with this backstories and stuff. I enjoyed it. It pulled me along. I also found it really, really predictable. So for me, the plot was just sort of, eh. Um, at one point, I will say, this is sort of a little bit of a spoiler um, because it's at the end of the book, but um, basically, so spoilers, just so you know, spoilers. Um, Essie has been debating whether or not she wants to write a book about what has happened to her. Um, and then when, and that's part of what she does with Liberty is she like gives Liberty Bell all of her diary entries and Liberty is like working on putting together a manuscript. Um, and then Essie is warned by Liberty to like really seriously give it some serious thought about whether or not she wants to publish this book because it'll have 
far-reaching effects that that Essie can't predict right now and she would destroy a lot of lives. So Essie kind of has a moment where she's like, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I've decided not to do that. And so I was sort of surprised about that. I felt like Essie really had had her heart set on publishing this book. And so like, I will say that sort of plot point was a surprise to me. Um, ultimately, she learns a little bit more information and ultimately does end up releasing that book. Um, and so I felt like I mean, I, got, I was kind of surprised at that little bit of reveal information too. Okay, so the plot, for the most part, for like 90% of this book, it was predictable, it was like enjoyable, but also like predictable. And so other than those two little twists at the end, that's definitely gonna bring that score up. So I was gonna say like five, and now I'm deciding to go with like a seven. Okay, intrigue. This is like how hooked was I in the story? How much did I want to keep going? I did want to keep reading the story, but I predicted like almost everything. So, but for me, most of this book, that this is my biggest downfall of this book is that I felt like I could predict everything. I like saw everything coming and I was sort of frustrated that I was like, I didn't have very many surprises. I know I just mentioned two tiny little surprises in the plot, but like those were little. So for me, intrigue is where things are really going to take a hit and I'm just going to be like, it was fine. Um, logic, same thing. I, I felt like the logic of this book was very like step by step by step. Um, I really appreciate that this category is in here because there's definitely times in the book, in other books where I'm like, what is going on? Why is this person making this decision? This isn't how life works. Um, I do feel like there was a little bit of like, let's just throw money at the problem and then that problem went away. So like, I sort of it frustrates me when that trope is in the books, but also like I understand how money does make problems go away. So for the most part, I felt like this book was very logical. I didn't have any troubles following it, but that like kind of made it boring. Okay, so I'm gonna give logic a high score, but that definitely like because it's so logical and predictable for me is going to decrease the last score. So I'm gonna give like a solid like eight in a logic store. So my entertainment, my enjoyment, um, I was, <laughs> I was enjoying the book and liking the characters, but it was so predictable. And I was frustrated with that point. And I sort of felt like I wanted almost more of the like fallout afterwards. Um, so I sort of felt like, <sighs> I felt like I was kind of always wanting a little bit more from this book. I, I don't know how else to phrase it. Uh, my actual enjoyment and entertainment while I was listening was sort of middle of the road <laughs> throughout. So I'm going to give my entertainment score and the fact that it was so predictable to me a bit less. So I'm going to go with like, uh, like, a, like a very middle five. So Okay, so my camera died in the middle of the summary part. So um, I already have it written out. The summary of uh, the sum of all these numbers is 47.5 and you divide that by seven and the total is 6.8. And on the little scale, which I will put here, um, a 6.8 is the very upper end of three stars. So I sort of that's right where I was actually thinking about things. I was like, this is like a four, but like a low four. So um, like, the, you know, it's a very full three stars, uh, almost close to four stars. Um, so I'm happy I used this system because I feel like that is, I'm very pleased with that star rating. Um, overall, my, I think I said a lot about the book that uh, is sort of functioning as my review of that book. So yeah, I'm really glad that I tried out the Caw Pile system for the first time with the Book of Essie. So um, if you read the Book of Essie, if you have ever used the Caw Pile system, uh, or if you use a sort of modified Caw Pile system, please comment down below uh, about any of those things that you have to comment about. I'd really appreciate it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye! and um, sort of watched her whole life. Hey, that was my cat moving my camera.